Martin Sargent, and welcome to Argumental, the show where the brightest brains in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Do we make too much fuss about drugs? Are we living in a police state? And who's worse, Trini or Susanna? <laughs> Here to argue such burning issues and many others like them are, for the red team, Captain Marcus Brigstock and his special guest, Jared Christmas. <laughs> Closing them tonight, captain of the blue team, Rufus Hound, and his special guest, Lucy Porter. <laughs> Our first round is where I ask the teams to argue about a major topic that's been driving me to drink. This week it's this. Organic food, overpriced over here, and feeding England's middle classes. It's the clay-smeared, hectoring lefty of the vegetable box. <laughs> bursting with flavours, free from chemicals, and full of caterpillars. <laughs> so, the statement I want the teams to discuss is this. Organic food is just an expensive con. <laughs> First up, supporting the statement, it's the red team captain, Marcus Brigstock. Ladies and gentlemen, organic food is a con. It's an expensive con. It's the king's new clothes. And I am the little boy standing at the side of the parade that's going to help you all to see by pointing at the king. Not you, John. You're not naked. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm pointing at the king and pointing out the king has no clothes on. We can see his balls and they look like organic potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That seems to be the main qualification for organic food, isn't it? For the organic produce. The more lumpy, misshapen and filthy it is, the more organic it must be. But let me tell you, Kerry Katona is not organic, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't be sucked in by this nonsense. The thing is about organic food is that it's basically just a status symbol. That's why posh people order a box. Right? Not because it's easier. They just want the thing to sit on their front step. Yes, we've... Uh... We've ordered a box. It cost us £80. We're not going to eat it. Of course we're not. Have you seen what's in it? It's disgusting. <laughs> and so the neighbours peer and go, Oh, look, they've got a box. We better get a box. They put shit in these things, right? Chard. What the fuck is chard? <laughs> Who eats kale? Turnips? These things are cattle food. Even cows go, do you know what? I've got four stomachs and I'm finding that a bit of a struggle. <laughs> you know organic food is nothing more than a status symbol. Why? Because every time someone serves you organic food, they have to tell you it's organic. <laughs> yes, the, uh, the cabbage is all organic. It actually costs us £40. That's how much we care about you. It's bollocks. <laughs> Don't mind, it's just a marketing ploy. Oh, the supermarkets are in heaven with this. You know the best-selling organic produce? Baby food. You want to know why? Because they pay the checkout staff to look at you if you buy normal baby food and go, oh, you don't love your children. <laughs> An interesting thing. I thought most people love their children. You clearly don't care. Feed them this poison. <laughs> it's rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. Organic food is an expensive con. Don't be taken in by the lies you're about to be sold by the organic Harridan, <laughs> frankly, that is Lucy Porter. Vote, please, with the red team. You know it makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> OK, now opposing Marcus but supporting organic food, it's Lucy Porter. gentlemen, I would beseech you not to be taken in by Marcus, no friend of the earth, Brigstock, with his <laughs> posh ways, frankly, because a con implies that there's some kind of trickery. The only trick involved here is planting things in the earth as God intended. Mother Earth, Mother Earth, the bountiful, beautiful, wonderful Mother Earth. She's called Mother Earth because Mother knows best. With her bountiful soil, not the, the kind of toxic time bomb more packed with poison than a Russian spy in a sushi bar. No, <laughs> that's what Marcus is wanting. I want lovely Mother Earth. Mother Earth doesn't need any kind of chemical enhancement or aesthetic improvements like some kind of agricultural Jordan. No. <laughs> and all this nonsense about, oh, organic vegetables, all oh, those they're all misshapen and weird, right? OK, so maybe you do look at your organic veg and you've got a potato that reminds you of Ian Hislop or, you know, a particularly <laughs> misshapen turnip that makes you go, oh, John Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> 
joking, of course, right? But the thing is, I just think, do we really want to live in the kind of world that Marcus is proposing? Where are these sort of Frankenstein foods, these Franken foods, are going to take over? Basically, Franken foods, these genetically modified things, they're going to kill us, right? Literally, we are going to have six-legged chicken who are sort of pumped up on steroids and angry. They're going to come and they're going to peck your eyes out, right? <laughs> so, I would say, basically, organic food, it's not an expensive con, it's an absolute necessity, which is why I beseech you to vote for us, the Green Blue Team. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Rufus and Jared, do you want to come in on this? I really do. I, like every decent person, shop at Iceland. OK? <laughs> you know why? Oh, you know why? <laughs> the reason Marcus is high-fiving you is he thinks you mean Iceland. <laughs> He's like, yes, I holiday there with David Cameron. We go skidooing together. <laughs> Lucy Porter, you made a number of accusations uh, about the kind of animals that I want to see. Let me ask you this. Go on. Jared Christmas. Yes. You enjoy chicken, don't I you? I love chicken. What's your favourite bit of a chicken? Uh, the leg. How many legs do you normally get on a chicken? <laughs> Two. How many would you like to see? Eight. OK. <laughs> uh, spider chickens. <laughs> spider chickens. Pulling themselves along <laughs> on their eight juicy legs. Angry, angry. Nothing angry. wrong with that. That is a bargain bucket if ever I've seen one. <laughs> bargain bucket on a bird. <laughs> da, 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 da. Lish. <laughs> <laughs> that is their future for you. Think about it. You go into Tesco's now and you are awash with mewling, puking kids looking up at their parents asking for more Watsits, more turkey Twizzlers. Whereas what happens in an organic world? In an organic world, you go to the farm itself. You hear the buzzing of the bees, the tweeting of the birds. What's that? The gentle sound of leather on willow. And hark! The gentle hum of a spitfire landing next to the village green. <laughs> Jerry finally seen off once and for all. Children are hugging in the streets. People are kissing. A sailor's got fruity with the woman from number 11. <laughs> it is our way. Do not be taken in by their robotic Rufus. evil. <laughs> what you described then was World War II and your nation was starving after that. What it needed was genetically modified crops that could grow anywhere to keep your nation full and marching on a full belly. That's what you needed, buddy, and that's what you didn't have. You're willing to take us back there? Do you really want to take us back to war when London was getting bombed? Is that your ideal world? Oh, we've got bees and birds. Yeah, the bees are stinging you and the birds are shitting on you. That's not a world we want. OK. That's it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You've Thanks so much, class. team. That's great. Well done. That's magnificent. OK, so which team made the best case? It's time for our studio audience to decide. If you think it was Marcus and Jared, hold up your red card. But if you think it was Rufus and Lucy, please hold up the blue one. Vote now. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what I'm talking about. That, that looks <laughs> like a big yeah. load of genetically modified beetroot. <laughs> Bright red the way it should be. <laughs> so that's a win for the red team. Well done, Marcus and Jared. Next up is Flip Flop, where we find out how well our teams can argue with themselves. I'll give a player a statement which they must argue for until they hear this sound. At which point, they must perform a U-turn and argue against it. Then Flip Flop their argument every time I press the buzzer. Rufus and Jared are up for this one. Rufus, I'd like you to start off by arguing that all men are bastards. <laughs> That is right, sisters. That is right. Anybody in here without a penis knows that all men are bastards. <laughs> because women are superior in every way. It, it, is, it is only right that the, uh, the mothers in the room, or at least the mothers-to-be, with their delicious milky breasts, feeding... <laughs> Feeding the world, offering the world a better way forward, the creators of all things. It seems a shame they have to share this godforsaken planet with idiotic men who protect them from themselves. 
Because let's be honest, you leave enough chicks in the same place at the same time and that is going to be one big vag off. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> oh, no, it is not right. <laughs> Out of touch with my emotional self would I have to be to think that? Oh my god. The endless nagging though that we <laughs> Oh, have you seen any men? No, have you seen any men? What would they put in their heat magazines? I mean, literally they would not know their womb from their elbow. <laughs> of course they would. <laughs> but there'd be no need for a womb. Without men, women would have to evolve a way of reproducing that would mean you wouldn't be cursed every month with pains that, let's be honest, are designed to favour men so that we can impregnate you with a horrible, evil seed. <laughs> Far better you swallow it. <laughs> Help a brother out, yeah? Would it kill you? Once in a while, maybe a birthday, Christmas, something like that? I mean... That is pretty selfish when you think about it. Just uh, It is selfish. <laughs> because where is the interaction? Where are the love? I tell you what, ladies, I think I'm right when I say it would be a little bit less of bastardy of me if we could just cuddle for a while. Let's be honest. <laughs> Cuddling is rubbish. <laughs> what are we, Eskimos? <laughs> In a way, we are Eskimos. <laughs> Sealed from the cold breeze of our own wretched emotion by the igloo of ourselves. <laughs> what we need is more knitting, more warmth, more love, more... Porn. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> well done, Rufus. Bastard. <laughs> According to a recent survey, most women prefer bastards. So if you want to get lucky fellas, make her pay for dinner, flirt with her best friend, and then kill her kitten with a mallet. <laughs> Jared's up next. I'd like you to start by arguing that Australia is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> Obvious Australia is the best country in the world. It's a continent. No other country is a continent. That's how good Australia is. They win everything at sport because they're amazing. Look at them, they're all tanned, they're beautiful. Home and away is the best program in the world. <laughs> Neighbours is shit though. <laughs> so, you know, it's not quite a yin and yang thing because when I said home and away is great, it's actually shit. And all Australians, like men, are bastards. <laughs> all right? No one likes an Australian. Have you ever been locked in a room with an Australian? Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> the room with their good eye, mate, how's it going? Throw another shrimp on the barbie, brilliant. You know, you just want to hug them and just snuggle into their manliness, even if they're women. Their women are manly and ugly. And, uh, really, it's hard to know how they procreate uh, with, with that sort of thing going on. And uh, they call flip-flops thongs. That's confusing. British people go there and go, this thong's really tight. It's meant to be on your foot, not up your... <laughs> but maybe it should be up you. I can't whistle anymore because I'm so excited about Australians being awesome. With a capital A for awful, W for wankers, E for uh, uh, S for suckers, O for um, who are you? And N for my mum lives there and I'm sad about that, and E for excellent uh, place to be. Screw America. Get Australian at the vanguard of taking over the world. That's what we want. We don't want McDonald's. We want sausages cooked on the barbie. We want platypus. That is, how fucked up is that animal? <laughs> what kind of a country has an animal that looks like a duck mated with a beaver <laughs> and then someone put a spatula on its tail? It's with, have you seen a kangaroo? How stupid is a kangaroo? It's like a living space hopper. How awesome is that? Oh, how cool would that be to ride? Thank you, Jared. So, two good flip-flop arguments. But which one was the best? Blue cards for Rufus or red cards for Jared? Vote now, please. Oh. 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 <laughs> that is a clear win for the blue team. Bad luck, Jared, but well done, Rufus Hand. <laughs> Join us after the break, and we'll be asking if beauty is more important than brains and finding out if Sir Elton John is a national treasure. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Well
Welcome back to Argumental, the show with more argument, shouting and hissy fits than a night out with Kevin Keegan. <laughs> right, next up is the slideshow. One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue, but this time I want them to illustrate their argument with a series of random pictures that they've never seen before. Marcus and Lucy, you're up for this one. Marcus, I'd like you to propose this. Beauty is more important than brains. Here's a picture to start you off. <laughs> well, of course, beauty is more important than brains, ladies and gentlemen, as evidenced by this picture here. Look at that. That is a beautiful man. I'm straight. I'm married. I would. <laughs> <laughs> and if you took a poll right now of three of the audience to say, <laughs> who here agrees with me, it would be a resounding... Three hands in the air <laughs> to say, yes, beauty is more important than brains. And when they did that, all of the beautiful people would go... <laughs> ..and assume there was something interesting to look at. Now, folks, let me show you something beautiful. <laughs> OK? <laughs> that is a picture of Rufus Hound. <laughs> Just intelligent, <laughs> but not pretty, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, I think the point I really want to make is best demonstrated with this next picture. <laughs> Kira Knightley. Frankly, Kira Hourly, given half the chance. <laughs> <laughs> Although, with that amount of meat on her, I suspect she wouldn't survive until midday. But... <laughs> She is beautiful and an intelligent person, but what is it that's made her successful? It's not the brains, ladies and gentlemen. It's the fact that she's absolutely stunning and they know if they slap her on a poster, some men will slap themselves near to the poster. <laughs> like I say, folks, that's a big old cock. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Next up, arguing that beauty is not more important than brains, it's Lucy Porter. <laughs> OK, Lucy, here's your first picture. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yes, beauty... Well, beauty and brains are not mutually exclusive, as this picture shows. Uh, this is the uh, team from the Hadron Collider. Um, <laughs> <laughs> taking a little bit of a break. You can see there... The, uh, yes, the one in the middle, she is actually the head of applied physics at Derby University, which you can, of course, you can tell by the crown and the sash, uh, which is what all academics are wearing uh, these days. Um, this, now, because I'm a brainy person, I can tell that this is a picture of some lovely bubbles. <laughs> 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 Um, no, this is obviously this refers to DNA, the helix, and uh, DNA. I mean, you know, we are born with beauty. We are born with brains. Some people are born with both, like John Sargent. <laughs> um, um, brains obviously will help you out in a situation of a panel show. <laughs> Do you want to see my knockers? They're actually. <laughs> <all right. laughs> um, yes, us brainy people, we need to Roger more. Um, that's what we need to Intelligent people and less of the idiots. That's what we need to do. <laughs> oh. Just snaky, snaky. Um, <laughs> beauty is only skin deep, and just as a snake sheds its skin, ladies and gentlemen, one day Kira Knightley's face is going to fall off. <laughs> and I look forward to it. Well done, Lucy. So who made the best illustrated case? Let's find out what the studio audience thought. It's blue for Lucy and red for Marcus. Vote now. <laughs> that, to me, looks like a blue victory. Bad luck, Marcus, <laughs> but well done, Lucy Porter. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Right, time now for our celebrity round, and tonight we're looking at this living legend. Yes, it's Elton John, the lavishly furnished, astroturfed, pint-sized ivory tinkler. <laughs> a knight of the rough. He's also the nation's tearjerker-in-chief. <laughs> but the statement I want the teams to argue is, Elton John is a national treasure. <laughs> First up supporting Elton is Jared Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to argue that uh, Elton John here uh, is a national treasure. In actual fact, he's an international treasure. 
That's undebatable. He is an international treasure. I am here to argue that he is a national treasure to you, the United Kingdom. And yes, he is high in your kingdom. He's been knighted, he dresses like a jester, and he's a massive queen. <laughs> that means he is a national treasure. His music alone is worthy of that status. Even if we didn't know anything about him, but his music, national treasure. But the great thing about Elton John, the brilliance, the amazingness, the superbness of Elton John is that we know so much more about Elton John than just his music. Look at how the guy dresses. This is incredible. This, this is inspiration for anyone. It says you can wear whatever the hell you want. And that has got to be a good thing. Do you think Elton John ever looks in the mirror and goes, mm, too much? No. No, he doesn't. This is a man who 40 years ago went to a fancy dress party and he has not been home since. He's out there enjoying every day. He's loving it. He wears what he wants to wear. That is an inspiration. Elton John. He is flamboyant. He is out there. He is over the top. And that's why we love him. He is the gayest of the gay. And that is brilliant. If aliens came down and said, what is this concept of gay? We would show them Elton John. He is uber gay. He got married. He's a gay guy who got married pretending not to be gay, but then came out as gay. He's like a gay ninja. You didn't know, you didn't know he was gay, but then wham, he was out there. He could have just come out of the closet. He fired himself out in a massive pink cannon. And he was wearing the entire closet at the same time. That is impressive, and that's why he's a national treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, vote with your heart. Vote red. I thank you very much. Thanks, Jared. Now, arguing that Elton John is not a national treasure, Rufus Hound. Elton John is not a national treasure. He's a national joke. See, right up until before the death of Princess Diana, we all thought he was a bit of a tit. But then Diana died. He rewrites the words to Candle in the Wind. I'm not going to have a go at Candle in the Wind. It's a pretty good song. I'm just saying, is that the best we can do as a national tribute? It's tantamount to taking a picture of Marilyn Monroe, scribbling the face out, drawing a crown on and going, we miss her. <laughs> He's not a national treasure, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look, uh, let's break it down for you. Yes, I accept the fact that we, we look at him and we go, oh, he's brilliant because he says the things that other people wouldn't say. Do you see that documentary, Tantrums and Tiaras? It was like, oh, God, a real peek behind, right? He's a dick. <laughs> People watch that documentary where he's like, oh, you know, you can follow me anywhere. And yet, all we saw was him flouncing off around tennis courts. And yet, we sit at home in the comfort of our own homes thinking, oh, well, he's actually quite a nice, you know, how brave of him to let the cameras... He's a dick. <laughs> if any of you lived with him for ten minutes, you would have stabbed him in the throat. <laughs> Look, he had some good records in the 70s, but so did Leo Sayer. And we still think he's a dick. <laughs> He's not a national treasure. He's some bloke who's made some money. He's got some dogs. He likes flowers. Lovely, lovely. We're all British. We totally get the fact that we find him sexually non-threatening, so we feel like we should worship him in some small way. Doesn't change the fact. He's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody argue. Anybody, anybody apart from the red team, put your hand up now and tell me why he's not a dick. Good. Right. <laughs> Job done. Vote blue. Thank you. <laughs> OK, thank you, Rufus. Lucy and Marcus, you can join in. That particular outfit Elton wore to his 50th birthday party and, having put the costume on, realised there was no way to get to the birthday party, so he hired a removal van <laughs> to take him there so that the costume wouldn't get crumpled. Those are the actions of a national treasure, my friend. <laughs> oh, no, those dick. are the actions of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> you, what you're saying is, here is a man who put on clothes so heavy he couldn't get to his own that's party. Right. Yeah, that's if right. If our nuns did that, awesome. we'd have them put in a home. <laughs> that's right. But he's that's not right. our man. He's he? not our man. He <laughs> just dresses like it. <laughs> Did you mention that he's a dick? I don't know if that came across <laughs> quite clearly enough. Like... He married that poor German girl. I yeah, because he's a ninja! Oh. I said yeah. that! Yeah. I covered this porter! I covered this porter! Really... Shut the fuck up, porter! I covered it! <laughs> I covered it! Oh, no. I didn't... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Lucy, let's...
Let's hug it out. Let's hug it out. Let's hug it out. Seriously, I didn't mean that. That's another way of saying I hate you. We've brought Lucy to our team, Rufus. You're by yourself. I think we might lose. Stay. Stay. <laughs> Stay. You know you love Alfred. No, I don't know. I don't... You've got him on your iPod. I have. <laughs> well, it's only because Tiny Dancer, I was going, oh, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> National Treasure speaks to you. Why, <laughs> Marcus, as the team captain here, yep. why is Elton a National Treasure? If it looks like treasure, it probably is treasure. <laughs> 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 OK, thank you very much. Thank you, teams. Well, again, the final decision will be made by our studio audience. It's a blue card for Rufus and Lucy and a red card for Marcus and Jared. Raise them now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> These people know a national treasure when they see it. Yeah, they do. They've seen one in Elton and another in Jared Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm from New Zealand, but I have a UK passport. Mm. <laughs> There's a dead guy in the Thames at the moment, but let's keep that quiet. So, <laughs> a triumph for the red team. Well done to Marcus and Jared. <laughs> of course, Sir Elton is a national treasure. In fact, he's just like one of our grand country houses. He's solidly built, surrounded by flowers, and gets rethatched every couple of years. <laughs> Time now for the final quick-fire round and a last chance for our teams to display their argumental powers. I'm going to show them a series of pictures. All they have to do is suggest an argument to go with them. So here we go. Here's your first picture. <laughs> is it an argument for saying that that is the provisional wing of the Muppets? <laughs> <laughs> is it an argument against actual frog marching? <laughs> is, is it an argument for drug testing within the French... A uh, synchronised swimming team. I'll tell you what, that's an argument against going carol singing at a witch's house. <laughs> <laughs> Next picture. This is an argument against the staff photographer at Nuts magazine. <laughs> this is an argument for hoping that's a gun and in front of it is Bill Oddie. <laughs> this is an argument uh, against... Hold on, that's not the beaver shot I was after. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the next picture. <laughs> Whoa! That's an argument against inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> and the fella on the left doesn't look any better. <laughs> Trust me. That's <laughs> it. Um, pretty it's... sure uh, this is an argument against the notion that the Queen and Camilla don't get on. <laughs> uh, is it an argument against uh, the reenactment of Prince Charles's birth? <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Red for Marcus and Jared, and blue for Rufus and Lucy. Vote now. So, I can tell you that the red team have won the round, which means this week's winners Reset. are the red team. <laughs> well done, Marcus Bridgestock and Jared Christmas. Commiserations to Rufus Hound and Lucy Porter. That's all we've got time for. Good night. <laughs>